back to my channel. So today I'm really excited about this project because I really like wearing skirts and in winter I have a really hard time wearing like the same skirts that I wear in summer because like all of them are really short and I just like can't put together like the right vibe of an outfit that I want. Um, so today we're going to be making a longer skirt out of this gorgeous fabric I got from Joann's um, and I believe that this is a bubble gauze cotton fabric and I got two and a half yards of it in a charcoal gray color. Um, and I think this muted color will be really nice for winter, like I said, but I'm also hoping that I can kind of wear this in the summer as well. And the design for the skirt is going to be one that you guys know I love because we're going to be doing like a tiered ruffle skirt. So it's going to be like a combination of my ruffle skirt that I made a long time ago and my tiered ruffle dress. Um, and I'm really, really looking forward to it because it's going to be super versatile and really, really cute. So it's going to have three tiers, an elastic waistband, and it should also be super, super easy to change it for different sizes. Um, and it's also really beginner friendly, so I hope you guys give it a shot. And I've honestly been thinking about this skirt all week, so I think we should get started on it. I think these are the easiest pattern pieces I have ever shown you guys to cut out, um, because they are all just going to be rectangles. And the technique I was using to cut them out is like this ripping technique that also gives you a perfectly straight edge, because you can see mine is pretty raggedy at first. So you're just going to put a little notch into the edge of your fabric and then start pulling it. And then your fabric will just rip down this perfectly straight line. And I use this ripping technique for all of my pattern pieces because like I said, they're just big rectangles. So you can just measure out one side of it and then just rip it all the way down your fabric. And as you can see, this technique gives you a really clean edge to work with. And bonus, this technique is also extremely satisfying. <laughs> All right, and here are all the pattern pieces for this project. There are really just three different pattern pieces. And for the sizing of this project, as long as the width of the first tier is larger than your hips, you should be able to make this design without making any adjustments except for the size of your elastic. And another thing to note about these tiers is if you cannot get the total length out of just one piece of fabric, as you probably are not gonna be able to with the really long ones, it's okay to just cut these into multiple sections from different parts of the fabric. And yeah, super easy, that's all the pieces. I have my three layers all cut out now, and I've marked all the pieces that go into each one. So we're going to be working with the first layer first. Um, and so I'm going to take this one, and since these pieces are just a big rectangle right now, I'm going to sew down the sides that are not connected. So I'm just going to straight stitch that and probably put a zigzag stitch down it too, so that this doesn't fray. Or if you have a serger, you can just serge that edge to finish it off. And now your first tier should be one continuous loop. So now we're going to make a casing so that we can thread some elastic through it and make a waistband. And so you're going to want to choose your elastic first before you do this so you know how big of a casing you need to make. And so my elastic is one and a half inches thick, so I'm going to make my waistband a little bit bigger than that so that we can thread it through nicely. Um, and I kind of had to Frankenstein my elastic together, but it's fine. It still works just fine. Um, and so we're going to take our first tier and all along the top edge is where our casing is going to go. So I'm going to take the first tier and lay it out and the way we're going to make our casing is just by taking the top edge and folding it over once just a little bit and then folding it over again the thickness or I guess a little bit bigger than our waistband. So you're going to want to measure this out all the way down while you're pinning it. And then we're just going to pin the bottom edge in place. And once that is all pinned all the way around. We're going to go ahead and sew along the bottom edge of this fold, but we're going to want to make sure to leave an opening at the bottom so that we have a place to thread our elastic through. And now we could go ahead and thread the elastic through now, but I think I'm going to wait because I think it'll be easier to add on the other layers if the first piece is just nice and flat right now. And now we're going to start working on the second tier. Um, and this tier is actually cut into two different pieces instead of just one. So the first step is going to be matching up these shorter sides here and sewing this into one big loop. And now that we have this giant loop, 
I'm going to go ahead and split it into four equal sections. And I'm going to do that by folding it in half one way and adding pins at the top. And then I'm going to open it up and match up the pins that we just added. And then after those are lined up, you can mark out the other sides to get the quarters. And I'm going to sew across the top section of the second layer with two parallel basting stitches so we can start gathering this up. Um, and on each halfway point on either side, I'm going to stop and start a new stitch so it'll be a little bit easier to gather it up when it's not all in one big thread. And a basting stitch is just the longest stitch on your machine, so I'm going to use my regular straight stitch, but I'm going to turn up the length to the longest setting. And just to save on thread, I'm going to switch out my bobbin for a different color because we're going to be taking out these stitches anyway later. And now that we have all of our basting stitches, I'm going to bring back in the first tier really quickly. Um, and I'm also going to divide the bottom edge of this one into four quadrants. And then we're going to turn it right side out. And now we're going to bring back in the second tier and we're going to match up these four quadrants together with the first layer. And now comes the fun part of actually gathering the skirt all up. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to take two of the basting stitches on the same side of the fabric and we're going to pull on these to start gathering the fabric. And the reason why we divided the skirt into four quadrants and then started doing this is so we can get our gathers really nice and even. So we're just going to gather all of these sections until they fit perfectly into the first skirt layer. So I'm just going to even this one off. And we're going to continue this process all the way around. And now that it is all gathered and pinned, we can go ahead and sew all the way around it with a regular straight stitch. And then afterwards, again, I'm going to serge around the top. After that has been all sewn, we can go ahead and take out all of our basting stitches. And now we have our first two tiers. And now adding on the last tier of the skirt is essentially the exact same process as the second tier. So I'm going to bring these pieces over and sew them all into one big loop. And now we're going to divide this huge piece into our four equal quadrants. And if you kind of struggle to get all of your ruffles nice and even, you can always divide this into more than four quadrants if you wanted. And I'm going to do the same thing to the second tier. And now on the third tier, I'm going to add our two parallel basting stitches all the way around the top edge. And now we can pin these together pretty side to pretty side and start gathering. And now I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way around. And now take out our basting stitches. And now we officially have all of our tiers. All right, and now that we have all of our tiers, it's finally time to finish up the waistband by adding in our elastic. So I'm going to lay out the top of my skirt and find the little opening that we left here. Um, and then I'm going to take my elastic and a safety pin and just connect the safety pin to the top edge of my elastic and then we're going to thread it through this little casing. And we're just going to kind of push the safety pin through and then guide the elastic. And we're going to do this until all of it is gathered and out the other side. And now that we have both ends of our elastic, I'm going to make sure that it doesn't have any twists all the way around and that it's all in the same direction. And then I'm going to pin my elastic together and try it on to make sure that it's a comfortable tension. And then once you are happy with how the elastic feels, we're going to unpin it and cross these pieces over like this. And then sew a zigzag stitch across here to hold them together. And then we can just tuck that back into the waistband and then I'm going to sew that little opening closed. And next up, to make this waistband lay a little bit nicer because it's kind of rolling over and not super even all the way around, is we're going to stretch our elastic as hard as we can as we sew a few straight stitches all the way down. And this is going to make it lay really nice and flat and also make all of our ruffles really nice and even. And 
And now all that we have left to do is add a hem all around the bottom edge of the skirt. And I did cut the skirt down a little bit just to get to the length that I wanted. And now I'm just going to fold over the edge once, fold it over again, and then pin this down and sew it all the way around. And here is the finished skirt. I love how the skirt turned out so much. I'm already tempted to make it in like a bunch of different colors because it is so versatile, like I was saying. Like, I think it's a great layering piece for winter and also for summer. It's great for that like cottagecore or like boho style. So I'm definitely going to have a lot of fun with this skirt. And it's so fun to wear because it's just so big and flowy and comfy and you can't help but feel extremely aesthetic when you wear it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys liked it and will hopefully make it for yourselves. And if you do, you can always send me a picture on Instagram. I get so excited to see your creations. And like you guys saw, this should be a super easy project. You should be able to adjust to a wide variety of sizes. So it's another one of those that is super great for beginners as well. So I hope you guys give it a try. Happy sewing. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!